The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is on the air and it's heard on WNOV 860 AM and W293CX 106.5 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. WWDB 860 AM in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and WAAM 1600 Ann Arbor, Michigan. Coming up on the program, we're going to discuss different types of gardening methods. One just doesn't fit all, and we may introduce some new ones that you were not aware of. Plus, 10 cool weather plants that you can start growing right now. As well as our guest, he's horticultural expert, TV personality from Get Up and Grow, William Moss will be with us. Plus, your garden questions. The hour is going to be jam-packed, so we might as well start it right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you've taken time out of your day to join us on the program, whether you're in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, or listening anywhere via the Simple Radio app, the TuneIn app, or through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website under the radio tab or the podcast replay tab or in-studio video replay. We're thankful that you've joined us, taking time out of your day. Uh, I'm your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. You can find all of our content at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, whether, where you can find Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 1,300-plus garden video, short and long format, and every replay of this show in full length and segment in video and podcast form. There's a number of ways in which you can reach us, and one, and they're all through the Ivy Organics Hotline. The Ivy Organic 301 Plant Garden Natural protects plants against damaging sunburn. Insects and rodents protects newly installed plants and trees, shield pruned and damaged surfaces. For use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs, this product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. And you can reach us by the ivyorganics.com 301 plant guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com. Or you can text us on the instant access ivyorganics.com text line And that's 414-368-9311. You can tweet us using hashtag TWVG. Our Twitter handle is at TWVG Show. Don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311. The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Plenty conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you, creating holes fastly and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root-to-soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand-welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at PowerPlanter.com. So there you go. We appreciate them uh, supporting us as well as all the sponsors you hear throughout the program. We're going to do things a little different today. We're going to bring our guest in right away as he is teaching a class today. So we're going to go to the Ivy Organics 3-1 Plant Guard Hotline and bring in our guest. Master gardener, horticultural educator, media expert, and all-around great guy on various media platforms. He explains how to grow sustainably and have gardening success through TV, radio, print, presentations, and workshops. He uses gardening and greening to inspire people to get out and grow. William Moss, welcome to the program. Thank you for taking time to join us and our listeners and educating all of us with some of your garden wisdom. Oh man, well, thanks for having me as always. It's always good to hear you guys and be with that. So, uh, spring starting. Let's, let's get going. Uh, what is a degraded forest? You put this up on YouTube the other day. You were you were in a group of people with cleaning out, I guess, what you call trash trees. What is the importance of uh, taking care or cleaning one up if you have it in your backyard? Because wouldn't nature just take care of itself? What, what's the significance here? Well, see, you, you would hope that's the case. But that's just not the way it works, especially in uh, suburban or urban areas. Nature sometimes gets off kilter. So, so you have trees that are very invasive, boss cells that are not native and cause a lot of damage to natural habitat. Excuse me, not boss cells, it's buff thorn. Um, even native box elders do the same thing. Honey stubbles, uh, trivets, a lot of those bad plants can get in there and they'll completely change the habitat. 
they'll block out not only your good plants, but they spread into the woods and adjacent areas and just make everything look tangled, overgrown, uh, not what it should be. Not enough openness to have the wildflowers and to have the, have the, have the, have the animals come through. So what you should do is clear everything out. You should clear out all the overgrowth, all the tangled stuff that kind of looks, it looks like a big edge a lot of the time in people's yards in the summer, so they leave it. You know, it's like a big uh, tangled mass, and they think that's what nature's supposed to be. But actually, it should be much more open. So if you don't know what's bad and what's good, I suggest you get in touch with um, the Botanic Garden locally around your area for the Cooperative Extension Service. So we've got a really good landscape service that you trust. You can talk to them and ask them, you know, is this tree native? What is it doing to the yard? What is this clump of shrubbery in the back doing? So uh, it's, 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 not, it's not simple to do, so, so it's hard for me to put it in a, in a few words. But, but if you can clear the stuff out, you'll notice a tremendous difference in your area, and then you'll be able to bring in plants that you love. Right, and some of these trees that you're talking about are not native to North America. They are, well, they're, an, they're an invasive species, and that's kind of somewhat of the reason why we're wanting to uh, remove them. Yes, especially things like buckthorn, which is really aggressive and shading things out. There's also honeysuckle that does this a lot. Multi-floor rose, you can find a lot with privet. Um, those, those, even even burning bushes are not considered to be invasive to many areas. So if you can get those out, you can get a lot of other cool things in. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a proponent. I just want to talk about this coming out soon to Chicago Land Garden and Magazine. Um, I'm a huge proponent of replacing those trees with small fruit trees. If you don't need a big tree, you throw in things like uh, a cherry tree or or like a beach plum, really cool native things that that provides fruit for you and wildlife, but also um, keep things open and beautiful. So that makes sense. You know, I'm I'm, I'm rambling on because I'm excited. I'm <laughs> more than I will read them this and, morning, guys. It I'm, makes I'm, really, I'm about it, to teach a class on vegetables, so I'm, so I'm kind of rambling. So rein me in if you need to. <laughs> okay, that's no, that's great information. Now, a lot of people say they want to garden. They always fail. They're more of a plant killer than a plant grower. What are some things these people can do to become better plant growers? Okay, first thing is just experiment. You know, don't don't always think of everything as, oh, if I don't do this, I failed. Actually, what you did is you learned the lesson. So at least now you know what not to do next time. <laughs> so, 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 so don't think that if it dies, it's always your fault. Sometimes it may have been the plant's fault or just not a good match. So ask the people at the garden center where you're going to buy your plant. Ask them, uh, you know, what plant fits my site. And just keep trying. The more you do this, the better you get at it. And and, and, and also for people who really think, oh, I can't grow anything, I have a completely dead thumb, well, then get you some seeds. Seeds are cheap. You can try several things. You can spread them out and try them, and that way you haven't invested much money into it, and you get a chance to see how plants grow all the way from seed to harvest or from seed to flower, whatever you're picking out. And just being there in that process and going through it, sticking with it through the whole season with teach you so much. So um, experience is the best teacher when it comes to gardening, and failure is a big part of that experience. So don't look at it as being negative. It's just part of the journey. Well, we had Shawna Coronado on the program a couple of years ago, and you're familiar with her, and she said you're not a good yes. gardener unless you've killed about a thousand plants. So, uh, yeah, Well, let's, let's up that, because I'm, I'm we were talking yesterday with some people from Morton Harbor reading where I'm at, and I was saying that there's nobody that's killed more plants than me. I will take the claim to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, William, what are some of your favorite vegetables to grow? I know that uh, okra is one of them. You've encouraged us to grow that here, and we were successful with that here in Zone 5 in the Milwaukee area. What are some that you enjoy growing that, that you're like your go-tos that may, may be you know, uncommon to others? So with by that this morning, and, it's, it's, and uh, my number one actually is the mossy winner of year as performance is cheese pumpkin. Uh, it is, it's, I, I just love to grow the plant because it, it covers summer through fall with so many changes. First, you have these big, beautiful leaves, and in cheese pumpkins, the leaves are mottled. So you have these beautiful pumpkin leaves that have mottled colors and markings all along them. They can be as, as, as wide as a dinner plate, bigger, bigger as a charger. And then you have, um, 
the flowers to come out, and the flowers can be six to eight inches apart. Now, some people eat the flowers. I recommend only eating the males, because the females produce pumpkins, which start to develop right after that, and then you have these big, huge pumpkins that you can harvest all through late summer, going through fall into the frost. And cheese pumpkins are actually butternut squash that are flattened out. So they're not like jack o' lantern pumpkins. Uh, so it's like a big, squat butternut squash. And it'll keep for like two years if you keep it in the right conditions. And it's delicious. We make these beautiful pies out of them. And I'm telling you, Joey, if you can taste this, these cheese pumpkin muffins, you'll be a convert too. So cheese pumpkins are my favorite vegetable to go that most people don't grow. <laughs> Awesome. Now, just want to let everyone know we're talking with Master Gardener, horticulture educator, media expert, William Moss. What are some of your major no-nos you see gardeners do early in the spring that they should not be doing? Well, um, a long time ago, I used to till my garden up. And I found from experience that the more you till, the more weeds you, you, you'll have that year. And also you destroy the soil structure. Lots of plants, especially a lot of the greens that we grow, the broccoli and even the okra, like a natural soil structure. So I'd say that tilling is probably one of the biggest mistakes that I see people do. Now, if you're a new gardener in a new space, I understand. But if you've been gardening in that same space for a few years, um, rather than tilling, I'd much rather do like you guys do and just put down compost on top of the bed and now you can pull that compost back when you plant your seeds but killing it just exposes so many weed trees i just that's probably the biggest mistake they make and then over fertilization uh, i see it all the time you don't need to fertilize so much in the beginning and then people forget to switch over and use less nitrogen in the summertime when plants are trying to flower you know you want to use heavy nitrogen early um if you want to use it at all, you know, for the plants to get green, but once they start that flowering and fruiting stage, you can ease back on that. And that's one of the reasons people have a lot of pests, especially in the late summer, because they're over-fertilizing, and the aphids seek out that nitrogen. All that extra nitrogen you give in the plant, all that rank growth is coming up, it's just calling aphids to it. So over-fertilization, tilling are probably the two biggest things that I see in the early spring. Now, we get this question, I see this question a lot on uh, garden uh, platforms or, or Facebook. Uh, I want to build raised beds, but I want to do it as cheaply as possible. Now, William, you know just like we know, you get what you're paid for. What What is the yep. best way that we can people can, to, can put a raised bed in, but do it for affordably? But when people say cheap, I'm thinking they're not going to have a good result at the end if they go the cheap route. I, yeah, yeah, I think so too. And you know, I, I've seen I've seen photos of you guys' beds, and you know, your beds are your beds are nice. And sometimes you got to put a little more into it to get out what you want. So if you're trying to do it for like under twenty dollars or under thirty dollars, you can get a kit. But those kits are usually smaller and sometimes flimsy. I find the best way to do it is if you're going if you're going to stay low, is you can you do it with cinder block. Or if you're a builder or, or, or like to play with tools like I do, you can build it, and I choose four by six wood. You can use you can build a six inch bed with just three um, four four by six by eight long posts. So so for a cost of one post may cost I think fifteen bucks. So for like forty five fifty bucks, you can build a six inch high bed. It's going to be four foot long and eight. Feet and eight feet wide. So you can have a nice size bed fairly cheap, but then you got to have the tools to build. Uh, it's not a kit. Like, like I said, you can get the kits, but, uh, but they're not as good as building this yourself. I always prefer to build a raised bed because they last so much longer. It's, let me just tell you the story. I, I built raised beds for my mother-in-law's house. I call her my mom in Chicago back in 1998 out of, or out of uh, three boards. They're still there today. Still sturdy, still producing sun chokes, just like you guys, sun chokes, still producing carrots and tomatoes. So if you build it out of the right material, it actually will be cheap because it'll last longer and you won't have to replace it. Right, just like anything in life, you put the investment in, you do it right with the right materials, and the reward will continue to pay you back year after year. Let me address the materials really quick. Yes, because go I ahead. Know some people are concerned about what chemicals may be inside of the wood. Everything that's currently being used has been approved by the FDA. Now you take that with a grain of salt because that's things that happened before. So if you if you really want to be sure that the wood you have isn't going to leach any sort of chemicals, look for either 
some sort of sustained grown wood that has not been treated or go with cedar. And because cedar does not have to be treated and it won't leak any um, chemicals into the soil because they don't have to treat it with any chemicals. So those, those are the two types of boards where, where if you want to be sure there's nothing coming into it. But um, all wood now that's slated for outdoor use um, is, is supposedly safe. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Well, we really have enjoyed having you on, on the program. How can we find out more about you and where to find you? Well, you can always go to get out and grow dot org. Right now, we love people to come and sign up and uh, you know register for the mailing list and um, join me next week. I'll be down at Chicago Flower Garden Show all week doing their potting parties four times a day. I love people to come down. We, we have a new thing this year where we're telling stories with our pots and we're planting perennials that are going to last from year to year. And so people will have a little patch of their garden to tell a story about. Uh, you know, so and uh, also on Facebook. You know, you guys are Facebook superstars. I'm, you know, I'm trying to get into it myself. So check me out on Facebook at William Moss TV, uh, or either at Get Out and Grow. Well, William, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day uh, to join us and educate Holly, and myself, and all of our listeners about more gardening information that we, than what we're uh, able to cover on the program. Thank you guys so much. I look forward to coming back and chatting with you. Absolutely. And when we come back, we're going to talk about uncommon or unfamiliar gardening methods and if they would work for you. You can always check out all of our information at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com or send us an email there. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Information, visit the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com. But wait, wait, wait. Until after the show, we still have more garden information to talk about. Your plants are greener when using Hydrobox Revolution in plant watering. Hydrobox catches water and delivers it straight to the roots to release when plants that need it. You water three times less often and plants grow faster. Hydrobox is an innovative little gel filled pouch that goes in the bottom of a container or grow bag multiple sizes based on container size. Easy to install and use. For indoor and outdoor use, saves time and money, lasts to three years. Look for it at homedepot.com or visit gohydrobox.com. New, new natural healing ointment, USDA certified organic. Get your tube at nunuhealing.com. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit Bobex.com. B O B B. Bex.com. Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5-in-1 planting tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Help for, for weeding. ProPlugger.com. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area, where you can find all you need, from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamins, supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Use melting snow as fertilizer. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe, organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products, from plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit biosafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. 
rupture melting snow in a bucket. Snow has nitrogen trapped in it and is considered the poor man's fertilizer. Use it to water your seedlings and garden for a green boost. Old time farmers had been known to plow it under right after a snow. Drip Garden is a self watering, self fertilizing pop up vertical garden with automatic timer. Easy to use, durable, grow 36 plants in a 4 foot by 4 foot area. DripGarden.com Absolutely packed with helpful gardening information. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart dot com. Absolutely packed with helpful gardening information. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart dot com. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food. A fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system. Solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems Raised Garden Bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway. Any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG2019 and get $295 off listed price of $1,695 plus free shipping. A $250 value at EcoGardenSystems.com. Flame Engineering. Home of the Weed Dragon. The perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds. No need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at FlameEngineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Brood Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. This is Mike Novak. And this is Peggy Malecki. From the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki. You are listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. On WNOV 860 AM and 106.5 FM in Milwaukee. WWDB 860 AM, Philadelphia. And WAAM 1600 Ann Arbor, Michigan. Wham Radio, which I used to listen to when I went to school there, but nobody needs to know that. Anyway, back to Holly and Joey Baird of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Radio Show. Dr. Earth has products for you that can help your garden grow better, and they understand what you're looking for in products. They're committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge natural organic garden-friendly products based on research and innovation. After 28 years, they are the leader in organic lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure-free fertilizer, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizer. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family, that is the founding principles of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information and where to buy. So we're uh, going to go over common, uh, less common garden growing methods. Now we're all familiar, many of us are, with ground garden, container garden, raised bed gardening. Okay, that, that's your, your, your big three, I guess, if you're going to indicate a, a category and numer- uh, put them in a numeral order there. So we're going to go over six other types of gardening methods that you may or may not have heard before. One is the straw bell garden method. Yeah, we are. We do a talk on straw bell garden method. It's a very 
it's a great method, uh, no matter basically no matter where you are. So this is something that you can easily do on a patio porch or deck. You don't have to have a you ground. You don't have to have a ground. Um, say your backyard is occupied with uh, a lot of other things. You could do this like in a driveway or, or just a corner of the yard. Or you have toxic soil. Or toxic soil, something like that. So this is a, a good alternative to growing in the ground. But also, sometimes people don't want to invest in raised beds. Maybe they don't want to haul the the soil in, things like that. So this is another alternative to that. And it's, it's a container garden. It's a container garden. So the basic premise here is the straw bale is typically about 30 to 36 inches long by 15 inches wide, and you put it on its edge, and this is the byproduct of the grain industry. This is wheat straw, or the uh, wheat stubble, the stalk, oat stalk, uh, barley stalk, that type of material that's compressed into a bale that you can in a conditioning process, create a container internally the soil will break the the straw will break down and feed the plant it turns into a soil medium and the plant grows in ter- uh, into the bale and it works very well we've done it a number of years we have found phenomenal success in growing butternut squash spaghetti squash watermelon cantaloupe and those type of plants and i think the biggest thing here is that you have to follow the conditioning process and that's the important part and you can get Joel's book growing a straw bale garden um, you can and I'm sure you can find information online. You can yep. get it from your local library. Our website has our it. Our website has it. But the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com. But conditioning the bale is a key proponent here because you can't just go put plants in a regular straw bale. You have to condition it so that the insides break down and it becomes that humus for it to grow. Yeah, in. if you don't break, if you don't condition correctly, the mic- the microbes in, ter- in in the bale will feed off the plant that you're growing and continue to kill the plant until the it satisfies the need of uh, food for those microbes. So that that's well, what, and the reason why yeah. we're saying this is because we've made that mistake. We've seen articles of people like, oh, don't try straw bale growing; it doesn't work. But no, it does work. It's very successful. We have people that come to our talks and tell us that people that come up to Joel and tell them that it's very successful but you have to do the conditioning. Yeah, if you it's like trying to make a strawberry pie without strawberries or a pie pan. If you don't do the instructions or follow the instructions right, then you just have the crust. The, the end result does not is not favorable to you. Right. So, so let's move on to hydroponic, aquaponic. This is becoming more well known, I would say. Um, people don't necessarily know what it is, but they may have heard these words before. So the first one would be aquaponic, and that is when you're using when you're growing plants in water, essentially you're floating over water, and fish are the roots are suspended the roots are in the suspended in the water, and then you use the a fish, usually a tilapia or something like that, and they fertilize the water with their waste. For aquaponics. For aquaponics, yeah. yep. So that's aquaponics, and so this is something that you could try on a small scale. It's also um, done in, I don't know if you necessarily want that in your house, but if you go to the plants, in the, if you go to, to the gar, uh, pet store, you'll see beta fish that can grow, can be in a little tank, and then you put a plant above them. This is a very simple, passive aquaponic process. Then there's uh, our hydroponic process. Yeah, that was aquaponics. Hydroponic. Uh, aquaponics is the fish, mm-hmm. uh, waste feeding the plants. Hydroponics is you're adding a uh, nutrient supplement into the water, whether it's pumped through the roots or the roots are stagnant in it, and it can be an, more of an organic or inorganic uh, process based on what information you are reading uh, on that. But it's, there's no fish involved in the hydroponics aspect of it. And we've done this. Um, it's it's a very simple system. We grew beans, we grew lettuce, beans, lettuce. Lettuce worked very yeah, lettuce well. Lettuce works really well. So um, you're not using soil as a medium. You're using clay pellets as a medium. They absorb the water, and the water is funneled through the clay pellets in order for the roots to uptake the nutrients in which you provide into the the water. And you do have to keep track of the pH level in the in the water in order to sub, uh, to keep the plant healthy through the growing process. Right. So that's that's that. Then there's hugel culture, hugel culture, H U G E L K U L T E R, and this is um, a way of growing on. You mound over. You take like a log, an old log, logs, limbs, limbs, whatever, and you mound dirt over it or soil over it. And as the soil breaks down, it feeds the plants. 
And that's kind of how it goes. And you can do this in a hill. Other people in more urban settings will do this. They'll create a raised bed of two to three foot in height, put logs, rotting logs in the bottom of it, put the soil on top of it. And what occurs is as those logs break down, they do two things. One, they feed the soil, and secondly, they absorb the moisture and release the moisture into the soil to actually act like a sponge, essentially, releasing the water into the soil, mound or or bed, and keeping the plants hydrated. uh, Internal self-watering system type of situation. So as we talk about hugelkultur, let's move to back to Eden, which is uh, similar but not similar in a way. So, because it involves wood, I guess, is that... Wood chips. Wood chips. So basically, at this point, what you would do is you take wood chips, you find an area, you typically lay it on newspaper and the wood chips on top. It takes time to break down, but then you have this, because of the wood chips that make friends with the soil and break down, um, you have this really nice growing medium, and it's it's very weed-free. Yeah, there's the Back to Eden Garden uh, movie. The, 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 thing that, the misconception that people have on this particular method is we put wood chips down and we grow in the wood chips. That is not the case. The wood chips are feeding the soil and breaking down and creating a mulch. You move back the wood chips after a period of time that you allow the soil to uh, be nutrient filled by the breakdown of the wood chips. You plant in the soil and you bring the wood chips back around as a mulch. It done correctly, like we talked about the straw bell garden method, it does work really, really well and almost eliminates any need for weeding whatsoever. And with this being said, something like hugel culture, back to Eden, those are more of a permaculture method where you are intending to plant there for years years and years. Um, this is not something that if you move from apartment to apartment or whatever, or house to house, um, maybe you have to move for work a lot. These these are more of like a permanent situation. Strawbell gardening, you can easily do anywhere, move around, even hydroponic, aquaponic. Um, the next one we have is foodscaping or edible landscaping. That that can be like semi-permanent, just kind of depending on, on what you want to do. But that what that involves is growing edible items within your landscape to enhance your landscape. So say you have a couple rose bushes and you want to grow some chives or onions because you like the pretty greenery that it allows, kind of like that. Or you're in a situation. Or like chard. You're in a situation where you can't legally or based on your conditions have a garden, but you have flower beds in which you can plant leeks, onions chard, uh, throw a tomato in there, something of it's hiding one plant around other plants to kind of maximize your space but also get something out of it. Well, another, um, Especially like kale is an, an another one. Yeah, another beautiful one. core gardening. Yeah. Um, so, so core gardening is basically um, you, you take a, an area of your either raised bed or a berm or something like that, you put newspaper in the middle, you like newspaper straw. or straw or something. And you dig a trench and you plant that in, the, you bury that in the trench, you cover it back over, it simulates a more uh, quicker hugo culture type of atmosphere, that straw or that shredded paper, newspaper, whatever, is absorbs water and then releases it back into a straw is the, the ideal material to utilize for this particular like method. Like a sponge. and it right. releases back. So you can do this with your raised bed or your ground garden right now. It does, it's not a whole lot of work that has to be done with it. Right. Another thing which you can do is start preparing your yard for summer and spring for the bugs that uh, you don't want in it. So the preparation now for it to be ready. So, so soon it will be warming up but you want to make sure you can enjoy your yard without sharing it with beetles and grubs. With spring, spring just around the corner, you know, you might want to think about that. There's all sorts of information uh, online about Japanese beetles, what to do with them. But Grub Gone and Phylum Bioproducts, and they also have Beetle Be Gone and all sorts of great things. Um, they are p- potent and environmentally safe biological pest control products. It's the first BT insecticide powerful enough to control both adult and larvae stages of susceptible pets. And unlike pet chemical products, the Phylum's line of products do not pose risk to beneficial insects, so like the bees, butterflies, other pollinators. Therefore, you can now achieve control rates that you expect from chemical insecticides without doing the harm to the rest of the environment. You can visit PhylumBioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O bioproducts.com. If you don't want Japanese beetles in your yard or around, that's the company that you need to look at. But when we come back, we are going to talk about cool weather crops you can put in the ground right now. This is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Got a question? 
question, email the show at twbgshow at gmail.com. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Planter earth auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root to soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand-welded and made in the USA lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune, just 99 cents at migardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round, pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. migardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at NorwalkJuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear in all black bags, protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at ShieldAndSeal.com. Gardeners know the hardest part of building a garden is building the rows. Now there is a long overdue patented, hand-pulled, heavy-duty, lightweight row building marble that you can find at rowmaker.com. The rowmaker can easily and quickly build multiple straight line, perfectly spaced rows of proportional height, width, and depth. This yellow workhorse makes building rows easy and so fast it will save you hours. Just pull it across your tilled garden and work smarter, not harder. See it to believe it at rowmaker.com. Planting your garden will never get easier. Just because you're ready to put your plant starts outside doesn't mean your plants are ready. It's time for this week's Michigan Garden Moment. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. You started your seeds off indoors. Now you're wanting to take them outside and plant them in the garden at the appropriate time when the soil temperature and air temperature are appropriate. But you have to transition your seedlings from indoors to outdoors in a hardening off process acclimating them to the outdoor temperature. You can't just take your tomato starts or brassicas from 70 degrees indoors and put them outdoors where it's 45 or 50 degrees at night. This hardening off process, it takes about a week. You want to take your seedlings outdoors, if possible, at the warmest portions of the day and start them off in a partial shade or shaded area and for a couple of hours each day and gradually working them into full sun by the end of a 7 to 10 day period to get them to where they can spend all night and all day outside without getting scarred by the sun. There's different charts and different graphs online that will indicate the best way to do such. But the information is that you cannot just take a seedling from indoors, take it outdoors, plant it, and everything will be fine. It will kill the plant. Side note, if you are buying your plant starts from your local independent garden center, you do not have to worry about the hardening off process because they have already done this for you. That's this week's Michigan Garden Moment. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional great soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, email with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. World 
coolestraingauge.com. Need I say more? The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Rowmaker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. So the weather's getting warm outside, so that means for us gardeners, we're excited, as also you can be excited about being part of Blue Mel's garden class this year. Yeah, classes in session. Register for Blue Mel's free gardening courses. You can get $5 Blue Mel bucks for every course you attend. If you attend all six, you get the class of 2019 Blue Mel's Green Thumb certification. Register at BlueMel's.com, and we'll be there April 11th. Uh, Talking on um, uh, vegetables and herbs, you can find more out at BlueMel's.com. They're at 4930 West Loomis Road, just south off of Layton. Otherwise, you can call 414-282-4220 or visit BlueMills.com. And the classes are all free for you to attend. It's Doug Oster from Everybody Gardens in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and you're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, and all your dreams will come true. Not really, but you'll learn to garden. Well, when it comes to planting early in the spring, some people think that gardening season only lasts from Memorial Day to Labor Day, and that's simply not the case for many gardeners, where you can utilize the space early on, as soon as the soil can be worked, and late up to and even beyond the first frost of the year in the fall. So we're going to go over 10 cool weather crops that you can get in your ground right away, as soon as the soil can be worked, that you may not be familiar that can be planted this time of year. So the first one we want to talk about is, uh, these are in no particular order, no, by the no way. No, no order whatsoever. <laughs> um, and, and, and all of these can be planted in raised beds, ground garden, or containers as or well. Or straw bales. And straw bales, assuming that the container is large enough to sustain the plant that we're growing here. So beets, uh, beets are a fun root crop to grow. And so a couple things about beets. One is that you can direct sow them, um, which is ideal, and they're root crop. So you want to have um, as much sun as possible and they also they are, they are a cool weather crop but then so what happens when you plant beets is the seed is basically a cluster of seeds it's typically like two or three seeds kind of m- mush together so when the beets start to sprout you just need to take a scissors snip back every like in each little cluster, cluster. of sprouts you can snip back and um, the ones that so you pick the one that looks the best, and then you snip back the other ones. Don't pull it out; just snip it back. Right, and, and then you'll have a nice beet. Yeah, if you don't, you're just going to have a bunch of beet greens and very little to no bulb development. And we've made this mistake, and many gardeners do because they don't understand it. Um, Swiss chard is a similar type of seed, but you grow Swiss chard. We'll talk about that in a moment. You don't have to thin those out at all. Right. So then we have broccoli and cauliflower. These are uh, a lot of stuff in the brassica family. These are part of the brassica family. It's just basically um, also known as the Cruciferous family as well. And, um, and broccoli, and cauliflower. We are, can't grow we it. Can't, we can't grow it to save our lives, but maybe you can. Last week we talked to Standard Processing uh, farm, uh, field a, uh, farm hand, uh, Christine, and she explained that they go through 70, they plant 70,000 broccoli and cauliflower plants a year. Uh, we want to get them in the ground very early. They like cool temperatures, good a firm base around the, the plant, and you should have some success. So we might try one or two and just see. Why? And just see. It's been several years. We've learned. We've got a lot more knowledge about growing the plant. I know. We can and, try. And we can we definitely can, try and see. And just see one what or happens. two. We're not going to use utilize a whole bed right. though. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, peas. Peas are fun to grow in the spring. One thing I want to say about that though is you want to make sure since you're direct sowing them, they're large seeds. One, you can soak your seeds, which is good. Um, but you want to know approximately how many seeds you're, you're going to soak. Otherwise, you just have a bunch of wet seeds and nothing to do with and them. You got to find some to put them. Find somewhere to put yeah. them. Uh, you want to definitely trellis your peas. Um, they grow up. You don't have to do anything fancy. You can just take some string along a tea post. Um, you can even use a tomato cage and just add or, some string. Or, or just throw a, a limb that's fell off the tree. Just something to allow them their their, ten, their, their tendrils. tendrils to attach you because they have very weak stems. If you don't trellis them, they will fall over and you'll lose 90% of your production because the plant's not going to produce because the stem is not can't do that. Right. So peas are fun to grow, and just make sure when you're 
direct seeding any of these items, make sure your soil is not too wet. If your soil is too wet, the seeds aren't going to grow. They're just going to rot in the ground. So you might be itching to get out there, especially on one of these warmer days coming up. But when you walk through your yard, it's just mush, so you want to think about that. Each one, of these, each one of these seeds require different soil temperature, so just do your, do your research. Um, now, kohlrabi, a lot of people don't always know what kohlrabi is. It's, it is part of the cruciferous brassica family. It's kind of a combination between a cabbage and a rutabaga, something like that. It has kind of that, that flavor. It's bland, but not bland. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, if you're but just, a lot of people like it. Yeah, but if, yeah. You're, if you're unsure, you want to get one from the store. It's not going to have the same pop as a fresh one does, but at least you'll know whether or not you want to grow it. And the bulb, which grows above the ground, is edible. That's the edible portion. As well as the leaves. The leaves are three times more nutrient dense than the actual bulb itself. So if you're looking for something that's packed with a lot of nutrients, uh, kohlrabi is the cool weather crop for you. Now we got radishes. Radishes are fun to grow, especially if you have kids because they only take about 30 days so you can get them excited and jazz about the radishes and then before you know it, they're um, they're here. Yeah, they're, they're ready. And they're and they come there. It's not just a traditional red radish. There's purple radishes. There's uh, white radishes. There's I, there, those are the icicles. They have uh, Spanish black radishes. Those got a little more heat. They've got Easter egg varieties, which is a light blue, light pink, uh, off white. So, so there's a lot of options. A lot and they're of kind options. of fun. And um, thirty days. A lot, of, a lot of uses. They're quick. Um, the benefit with radishes is one, the, the people are, are sometimes uh, familiar with the radish bulb being hot when they eat it because uh, it's gotten drier too much. You can boil that for five minutes. It reduces the heat right away. Additionally, you can let the radish go to seed or bolt, put flowers on, and then they become pods. They look like little pea pods that are coming off the flower. Those are edible, and they don't contain the heat like the bulb does. And our niece and nephew love them. Yeah, definitely. Um, there also is a variety called rat tail that does not produce a bulb. It simply produces those pea, uh, those radish pods that are for edible consumption. Okay, so then we got spinach. Spinach is a classic. Um, a lot of people don't realize that they think that spinach is a little bit more hardier than it is, and it's not. It's a cool weather crop. It's sensitive. It's very sensitive. It, it's hardier than like leaf lettuce, in a way, because leaves are usually thicker, but as far as the heat, the day the day length, it's it's not. It, it's a spring crop or a, a fall crop, and it's it's uh, easy to grow, typically. Then we got pak choy, or bok choy. This is a Chinese cabbage. It's cool a, weather. It's a, yeah, cool weather. All, all of these can be grown uh, in the spring, as we talked about, as well as in the fall. You want to figure out the time in, in your area when you can get these in the ground and project when you can harvest them. They can handle a frost. They cannot handle a hard freeze, though. Leaf lettuce and um, uh, manzua is the next one here. Mizuna. Mizuna. That's a spicier uh, It's got a little a little pepper bite. Taste. Yeah, it's got kind it, of peppery. It's not bad. No, it's not it's not like gonna burn your mouth like a hot pepper, but it has a peppery taste. Um, and we were growing some in container oh, yeah, in, in the kitchen. kitchen. Yeah. And I came home the other day and Joey's like, try this and it was the Mizuna and it it was good. Uh, the the leaf lettuce, we're all familiar with that. We want to direct sow that heavily because then you can have a whole I, I, a whole gr- carpet full of leaf lettuce. If you do it in a container, just as thick as you can put the seeds on. Don't space them out like you, the, the book says. Uh, intensely plant the leaf lettuce. If you're going to grow romaine lettuce, there is a green variety and a red variety of romaine lettuce that you can purchase or start. We recommend the red romaine simply because you get about two and a half, three weeks longer during the season, during the warm summer months, before it goes to bolt, before it goes to seed or gets bitter. And the bitterness of that leaf or that that romaine lettuce is the central vein. If you remove that central vein and eat the actual leaf structure, it's just like eating regular lettuce. That bitterness or that heat, that un- untastefulness part of it is that central vein. So remove that, and you can have lettuce almost all summer long. Also, planting it in a partial shade area to try to trick the plant, thinking the day is not 12 hours long but only nine hours long, you get a little more longevity out of your 
leaf lettuce as well. Uh, so we have mustard greens, any greens really. You could do turnip greens, mustard greens. Uh, I can't think of any more greens off the top of my head right now. Collard Those greens. Are, collard greens. These are all good cold weather cool weather crops too that you can grow. Um, they're just like any other and green. They, you the can mustard green, they, they, it has a peppery taste now. This is not just a giant leaf lettuce plant. There is some heat that goes into some of these plants. So. Right, and they... They, they can be invasive, too. Based on your sensitivity mm-hmm. of your mm-hmm. tongue, you know, that type of thing. Turnips and rutabagas. This is what we have found after nine years of uh, trying. It is a cool, is a fall plant. We have tried and had, out of nine years, we've had successful in growing rutabagas one time in the spring. We harvested them in July. What we have found is we plant them both in August, the first day of August, and rutabagas are 90 days to harvest, turnips are 60 days to harvest. And because the days get shorter and cooler, they seem to love that more than the spring time when the days get longer and warmer. So we have found that that works really, really well. Uh, so turnips and rutabagas. And then we have spring garlic, and we did this last year. You planted it, I think, success. end of April, end of March. Well, we planted it as soon as the ground could be worked. As soon as we could, chis- I could chisel it in the ground. I did a dozen plants because what occurs with garlic is it needs cold cycles on it in order to divide and the bulb correctly. If you don't, if you just plant it in May first, you're not going to have a good garlic harvest. Uh, I would recommend and we recommend planting it in fall so it can establish and then pop up in the spring. But spring garlic is does work. It does work, and it, and it was moderately successful, but you have to get it into when the work, soil can be worked, and then it goes through a couple of freezes and thaws in order to, to get that uh, cold cycle on it. Another one quickly is carrots. Oh, yeah, carrots. Carrots are not a hot summer plant. It's a cool weather plant. You, you plant it early in the spring, raised bed container, very loose soil. And then soil. by July you're harvesting it. Uh, yeah, 67, 80, 70 days for carrots uh, works very well with it. So that's just some of the cool weather crops that you can plant in your garden right now and get them established as soon as the soil can be worked. Now keep that in mind and keep the long range forecast in mind. If it's going to be warm today and the soil can be worked and it's going to be frozen the next couple of days, you've got to be uh, conscious about that. So when we come back, it's all about your garden questions. So if you've got a question, you can certainly get a hold of us. And you can also drop us a line at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in Greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trades with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Wisconsin Greenhouse Company has custom-made greenhouses to suit your needs. Grow fruit and vegetables all year long. Strongest greenhouses available that will last a lifetime. Beautiful design available in any size and color. Weather-resistant, energy-efficient to save on that heating cost. Mix and match with glazings to suit your climate. Sturdy and durable. They'll hold up to those heavy snow loads. They'll even add them to homes. For agricultural to lodging to entertaining, it's a great addition to any garden or landscape. Check them out at Wisconsin. GreenhouseCompany.com. Pharmaceuticals essential oils are high grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit Pharmaceuticals.com. 
Sony's universal pectin is high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's universal pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's universal pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash patients. Absolutely packed with helpful gardening information, Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart. Dot com. Absolutely packed with helpful gardening information, Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart. Dot com. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. If you've got a question, you can certainly get a hold of us on the Ivy Organic Hotline. Ivy Organic 301 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damage and sunburn. Insects and rodents protects newly installed plants and trees. Shields prune and damage surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivyorganics.com 301 Plant Guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com, or you can text us on the instant access ivyorganics.com text line, and that's 414-368-9311. You can tweet us using hashtag TWVG, or Twitter handle is at TWVG Show. Don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311. We had a couple questions come in this week. Yeah. Uh, it says, I'm new at this. Is there a master list somewhere that tells you how many seeds to start per cell? I'm hoping to start tomatoes and peppers inside, along with basil, cilantro, parsley, and mint. But I can't find anything that tells you how many seeds to throw in the hole. Uh, so I'm assuming they're talking about planting trays. Planting trays, cups, mm-hmm. the, the cells that you're planting in. It's uh, uh, basically one one per hole. One per hole, but if you have good... if With good seeds, you're going to have about a 95 to 100% germination rate. If you want to ensure, and we recommend, starting two seeds per cell. This way, everything's uniform, and as sad as it may seem, you want you, you would have to wean one out. So if you're planting tomatoes in a seed tray or a party cup or a root maker tray, you want to put two seeds per container, and that way you can wean off or remove, cut back the one that you are wanting to remove so it doesn't compete with itself. So overplant, wean out, you're going to be far better ahead of yourself when it comes to that um, than trying to just plant one and then if you have a tray of 12 and only 6 come up, you're at 50%, you've got to wait and replant and all this other stuff. So, uh, two per hole is a good good measure to start with. So, I have a problem that what I found with was 
jumping off with my ceilings. I don't fully understand what it is or how to best prevent it from happening this year. Dampening off is basically when um, at the kind of the base of your seedling. Soil, soil, soil base. Yeah, soil base. Yeah. Um, they basically rot is what happens, and then they fall over, and then your plant's dead. So what one thing you can do is you can use cinnamon, and you sprinkle cinnamon around or at the time of planting, and that helps prevent that fungus from... It's a, yeah, it's a it's fungi fungus. that destroys the plant because of most of the time it's because of... But it's of not o- a fungi. It, it's a mean guy. It's a mean guy. Uh-huh. Uh, and most of the time it's because of overwatering the seedlings. That f- that fungus created is in the soil, and then it takes effect and begins killing off the plants at the at the as the plant comes out of the soil at the soil line. Then it, all it falls over, just like you cut them off with the scissors. So water consistent or water when needed, apply the the cinnamon that has that anti uh, anti fungal bacteria uh, capabilities in it, and that'll greatly reduce your dampening off problems. And you may have had dampening off and didn't know it was you came home from work and all your brass was laid over, like you, you chopped them off with scissors, so that is um, one of the reasons why that may uh, happen. Um, I don't have an abundance, I have an abundance of oak leaves I could bring over and use as mulch, but someone told me the oak leaves would kill a garden. Well, that is simply not true. Oak leaves have a tremendous, all leaves have a tremendous, most leaves uh, that you find in your backyard have a tremendous m- amount of nutrient power for your garden. Oak leaves work just fine. They are large, they may mat together, you might want to run them over with a lawnmower or mulch them a little bit to break them up to allow the water to permeate through. But other than that, they will do phenomenal for your garden. We use uh, oak, leaves, maple leaves, and all of that that uh, we can find. All right, let's go to another question from Sandra. Uh, can you advise me on is sheep manure common and good to use for the garden. I've heard horse manure is very good. Any advice? Well, sheep manure is a common used uh, additive to soil, but you want to let it aged. If you don't let it age, it's just like cow manure or horse manure, it will burn the plants. And know your source. Know what the animals are eating, because if it, they're eating a grass that contains a broadleaf herbicide that can still be persistent after the animal has digested it, extracted it, you've composted it and put it in your garden. It can still be detrimental. You want to look up the uh, term uh, killer compost uh, and it'll tell more about what uh, I'm referring to when it comes to that kind of material. Uh, Joe Lamp, a host of PBS's own Growing a Greener World, experienced this with his own horses that was fed hay that he got from the neighbors, and it was traced back to this sp- uh, chemical that they spray on the fields to kill the broadleaf plants, but to keep the grass green and healthy. So know the source of anything that you put in your garden, whether you're doing it or you're getting it shipped in, so you know what your plants are consuming and what problems may come up, you'll know. I'm a new gardener starting for the first time this year. What advice can you offer me in allowing me to have the best success? Well, we get this question a lot. We see this question a lot. Let's go to standard processes. Ben, he is the farm property supervisor there. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. To help identify the best supplements for you, find your local healthcare professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. So let's go out to the farm and see what Ben has to uh, share with us about starting a garden, what he would advise. Hi, this is Ben Bartlett from the Standard Process Farm. I'm the farm property supervisor here and I want to talk to you today about starting a garden. Every time we start a garden, we've got to think about how much space do we have and how much time do you have to dedicate to that garden. Sometimes it's best to start small. We look through the seed catalogs in the winter and we get really excited about all these beautiful crops and we want to go big. And sometimes it just takes a lot of time. So. What kind of garden do you want? Do you want to have a lot of flowers and keep the house pretty? Do you want to have a food to eat during the season? Or do you want to fill your pantry for winter? Think about your space first. Think about how much time and room you want to dedicate. And then go through those catalogs and pick out what the beautiful plants are that you want to grow for the year. 
Well, we are out of time, and we certainly always appreciate your time. Uh, before we get into what's coming up next week, I want to remind you that... The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Tune in next week, same channel, same time. We're going to go over how much food do you need to plant to feed your family for a year. We'll, we'll crunch some numbers and go over what that will take, as well as things you need to be aware of before you go down to your local garden center and pick up some plants, as well as Ellen Polishuk will be with us. She's an author of her new book, Start Your Farm, Plus Your Garden Questions. Miss any portion of this show or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can do that a couple of different ways. One, by going to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website, clicking on the radio tab at the top of the page. Or you can go to your favorite podcast-providing website and search the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. You can find all episodes of Season 1, 2, and as we add them for Season 3. Well, until next time, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You've been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM. Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.